Hey Keto community, Dr. Jody here. So, you know, I decided to do a video on wheat because this is a very, very important topic. So many of us out there across all diet modalities, whether it's keto or paleo, vegan, vegetarian, you know, you name it, all of these people are eating wheat. We have been told that by eating wheat, whole wheat, whole grain products, we are making the healthy choice for ourselves. And so I'm here to share some very interesting facts with you. And then I'd like to encourage you to continue to research this topic on your own. So two of the books that I'm going to refer all of you to are One Wheat Belly by Dr. William Davis, a cardiologist, and Grain Brain by Dr. David Perlmutter. And these two individuals, these two physicians, are key opinion leaders in the ketogenic, low-carb, high-fat community. Um, they have very busy clinical practices, which is important. They're not just doing research, but they're actually seeing and treating patients with their approach. And what they've brought light to is the fact that the heart-healthy, whole grain message that the American Heart Association, the American Diabetes Association, and other organizations such as these endorse, this message is not necessarily true. And wheat could be that one thing that is very negatively affecting your health. So Dr. William Davis in his book, Wheat Belly, you know, I read this book uh, two and a half years ago and was so blown away by the facts in it that I never touched wheat products ever again. And what he's found in his clinical practice is that just by eliminating wheat from your diet, the following medical conditions improve. And this was the list at the time he published the book, which was a few years ago. I'm sure the list has grown since then. So just by eliminating wheat, you can improve the following acid reflux, irritable bowel syndrome, specifically the cramping and diarrhea that's associated with that, very uncomfortable for people, very embarrassing conditions. You can improve your energy level, your sleep quality, skin rashes, asthma, rheumatoid arthritis, athletic performance, mood swings, celiac disease, diabetes, cancer, cardiovascular disease, autism, and schizophrenia. So if you think about the list of medical conditions that I just read off to you, that's a very wide spectrum. And I want you to think about how curious that is, right? How can the elimination of wheat affect everything from your mood and psychological conditions like schizophrenia all throughout your body, way down to your intestines. I'm talking about irritable bowel syndrome. I'm talking about celiac disease, right? It's because wheat could be triggering an immune response within your body and inflammation that's driving all of these conditions. So just food for thought. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share facts with you about wheat that um, could be alarming. <laughs> I hope it's a little alarming, but here we go. Uh, back in the day, back in the, I don't know, early 1900s, right? We had huge fields of very tall wheat plants. You know, uh, one of our national anthem songs talks about amber waves of grain, yet that is not the wheat that we are consuming in our food today, and that's the whole point. So, Agricultural scientists were tasked with modifying the wheat plant to increase yield per acre, right? To feed the masses, basically. And through a lot of genetic hybridization, what was developed was basically 25,000 genetic varieties of something called dwarf wheat. Now, dwarf wheat is not the tall plant that, you know, our our ancestors found and grew in their fields back in the day, dwarf wheat is only 18 inches tall and has gone through numerous genetic modifications. 
things to help it maybe withstand pests and require less pesticides to increase shelf life in processed foods on the store shelf, um, to endure extreme weather conditions, right? This is why agricultural scientists genetically modify a lot of the plants and foods that we eat. And so that's something for you to keep in mind. And dwarf wheat comprises 99% of the wheat that we are consuming in our foods today, 99%. Now, the problem with this is that, you know, and there's a, there's a whole section of the book, Wheat Belly, that talks about this. Through all of these genetic modifications, not a single safety study was ever conducted on how this genetically modified wheat affects the human body or even animal studies, right? So the way studies are usually conducted is they'll do animals first, typically rats and things like that, and then we'll advance to human clinical trials. But safety of the genetically modified wheat, the dwarf wheat that we are consuming today, was never tested, it was never assessed. And this is what could be driving a lot of the conditions that many of you are experiencing today. That's one of the beautiful things about the ketogenic lifestyle is that we eliminate things like wheat because it's a carbohydrate, not completely, but quite a bit in our daily consumption. And we see that these things make dramatic improvements in people's health. Now, wheat is a giant business. Like I said, we have to feed the masses, right? And America, we tend to overeat. You know, for any of you who have tried the ketogenic lifestyle or intermittent or extended fasting, and a lot of times those two approaches go hand in hand very beautifully and work very well, all of you that have tested this have seen and experienced for yourself that you used to overeat, right? Because now you're doing two meals a day, one meal a day, you don't eat for 16 hours, 18 hours, sometimes you go 24 and you realize psychologically, holy crap, I used to overeat. Oh my God, everyone I know overeats. And so, you know, this is why our government has had to drive up food production and processed foods and we're outsourcing to other countries because we have to keep up with this food demand because we as a nation overeat. So something for you to think about as a person, as a patient. You know, the marketing message, eat more healthy whole grains, is endorsed by the following. The USDA, the Whole Grains Council, the Whole Wheat Council, the Diabetes Association, the American Heart Association, and the American Dietetic Association. There is a lot of money in wheat and grains, a lot of money. You know, there are a lot of private sponsors to these organizations, pharmaceutical companies back these organizations up, and these are the people that drive our guidelines, our dietary guidelines, the medical guidelines that our physicians are required to follow, and I'm trying to draw a picture for you of the money ring that is involved in this, because I'm telling you that wheat probably is not good for your health, because it's not what our ancestors used to eat. Now, um, here are, let me go into this first. What food products is wheat found in? And this is pretty mind blowing because what I want you guys to start doing is look at ingredients. I don't care about calories. Um, I want you guys to start looking at ingredients in the food that you're buying and eating and look specifically for wheat. So other names for wheat and food that contain wheat are the following. This is long. All-purpose flour, bulgur, bran, breadcrumbs, couscous, cracked wheat, cream of wheat, durum, enriched white flour, farina, gluten, gram flour, protein flour, matzo, multigrain bread, pastry flour, seitan, semolina, spelt, farro, unbleached white flour, wheat bran, wheat berries, wheat germ, wheat starch, baking powder, whole wheat flour, beer, beer, hello, that's a big one, 
coffee substitutes. This is where the list starts to get crazy because you don't realize that wheat is in these products. Instant cocoa, malted drink mixes, hot chocolate mixes, chicken and beef broth, both canned and cubed, falafel, gelatinized starch, modified starch, granola, granola bars, gravy, communion bread and communion wafers, hydrolyzed plant protein, ice cream. Who knew wheat was in ice cream? Icing sugar, imitation bacon. I think that's like bacos maybe. Malt, meat, fish, and poultry binders and fillers, such as those found in deli meats, hot dogs, and imitation crab. Paprika, paprika, pie fillings, puddings, ketchup, mustard, salad dressings, sauces like chutney, soy sauce, seasonings, for example, there's wheat germ and black pepper, all snack foods, all snack foods, even cosmetics, hair care products, medications, vitamins, Play-Doh, yes, the toy that kids play with, pet food, and wreath decorations. All of these products contain some form of wheat in them. So you as a consumer are eating a lot more wheat and wheat products than you realize throughout the day, every single day. And that's the whole point of me reading off that list. Now, most of us will eat wheat, like whole wheat toast, for example, right? Because we're told that it's high in fiber and it's gonna keep us full for longer. Well, that's also wrong. That's also false because wheat is actually an appetite stimulant. It stimulates your appetite. So how can it keep you full longer when it's actually telling you to eat more? A very important thing for you guys to know. So I talk about sugar a lot and I talk about how sugar lights up more parts of the brain than cocaine and heroin combined, which is why it's very addictive. Many of us are addicted to sugar and we don't even know it. Well, wheat, polypeptides also cross the blood brain barrier. It gets into your brain and it binds to the same receptors that morphine and codeine do. And to reverse the effects of wheat, you actually have to administer the same drugs, naloxone and naltrexone, that we use to reverse opioid overdose and opioid dependency. That in itself is crazy, people. That's crazy. Wheat binds to the same receptors as the morphine coding receptors in our brain. It, we have been told that wheat is a complex carbohydrate, but it's actually not. So that was another piece of misinformation that we've been fed. Wheat contains something called amylopectin A, very easily digested, and it has a glycemic index of 72. What does that mean? The glycemic index of wheat is actually higher than that of table sugar. So it spikes your insulin even higher and it keeps your blood sugar elevated for four to six hours after you eat it. That's worse than most foods. So again, you've been told that it's heart healthy. You've been told that it's good for you. It's full of all this stuff and you should eat it. Yet it has all of these deleterious effects to your health to your insulin, to your development of insulin resistance, to your body down the road. And I talk about this a lot in my posts and videos is there's all of these food products. Wheat is one of them too, and artificial sweeteners that spike your insulin and contribute to something called insulin resistance. And this is a very important medical phenomenon because it is one of the major common denominators in all of the illnesses and medical conditions that we deal with today as a society. So very, very important. Um, so what can you do and what can you eat, right? Really, that is the question that um, all of you are asking, all of you are thinking in your head. So you need to get informed. And here's kind of the plan that, um, or the advice that I'm gonna be giving you is <clears throat> read up. Read the books that I referred to earlier in this video, Wheat Belly and Green Brain, okay? 
okay? They're written by physicians who are stepping out of their comfort zone to educate you on what the truth is, just like how I do, and that's very important. Don't rely on medications to fix years of bad eating. Now, what you've eaten up to this point, that's not your fault, right? But there's so much information now that really the majority of you should start to be course correcting at this point, in my opinion. Eliminate the sugar, eliminate the carbs. Now start to remove wheat from your diet as well. You'll be shocked at how much better you feel just by doing these things. And prescription medications come with a price. So they work by interrupting naturally occurring processes in your body. It's important to understand that because when you do that, there is a ripple effect and there's a price that you're gonna pay down the road if you continue to stay on these prescription medications. So food for thought there. Two, don't add, eliminate. So we as a society, we're eating all of these things that are so bad for our health and what do we do? Then we spend even more money on vitamins, minerals, supplements, bars, shakes, drinks, all of these things that actually are not really helping. All you need to do is start to eliminate the, the harmful things that you are consuming and by doing so, you won't need to buy and take all of this other stuff. So I'm trying to save you a ton of money by giving you that advice. It's really common sense when you think about it. So think about it. If you're eating whole wheat because you need fiber, get your fiber from other sources. And so I'm going to list some. So here we go. Other great sources of fiber is avocado, berries, broccoli, artichoke, Brussels sprouts, almonds, chia seeds, and 85% dark chocolate. That is not a bad list. You don't need to eat oatmeal and wheat bread to get fiber. Eat all of these other great healthy foods that are filled with vitamins and minerals. Lastly, portion sizes. Just keep in mind, and I have my sugar baggies here, that one slice of wheat bread turns into this much sugar. So this is white bread and this is wheat bread. Okay, it's very, very similar. So now you're eating two pieces of toast, so times this by two, two pieces of bread for your sandwich, add that up day after day over the course of your lifetime and you'll start to see why you are consuming a lot more sugar than you really realize. And here's another one. This is one cup of brown rice, turns into this much sugar in your body. Two thirds cup of white rice turns into this much sugar and you'll see they're very similar. So again, we've been told that brown rice is healthier than white rice, but looking at this, is it really? No, it's actually not. And then just to drive the message home about marketing and false advertising and bad information, Honey Nut Cheerios is another great example. On the box, it says heart healthy. It's got the American Heart Association stamp of approval yet. Two servings, which is an average smaller sized bowl of Honey Nut Cheerios, turns into this much sugar in your body and that's not even the milk. That's not even including the milk. And a lot of us eat more than a bowl of cereal this size. Mark my word, okay? So when you're looking at the nutrition facts on food, look at the label, look at the carb content, and look at the ingredients. Look for the whole wheat flour, the whole wheat products that could be in the food that you're eating. And so I hope this is helpful. There are several documentaries on this exact topic as well. I encourage you to watch them on Netflix. Wheat is not what you think it is. And so go ahead and do a little more research for yourself and have a great rest of the week, everyone. Start to eliminate that wheat from your diet. Bye-bye.